By the time Orwell married Sonia Brownell, 1984 was written, after which he would never leave his bed again. But he left one final warning. 1984 is, I believe, a quite terrifying masterpiece. So terrifying, in fact, I don't think I should like to read another like it. I'm not absolutely dissatisfied with it. I think it is a good idea, but the execution would have been better if I had not been under the influence of TB when I wrote it. You once claimed that you have an ability to face unpleasant facts. Is that what you've demonstrated in 1984 by drawing an accurate portrait of the future? I think that allowing for the book being, after all, a parody, something like 1984 could actually happen. This is the direction the world is going in at the present time. In our world, there will be no emotions except fear, rage, triumph and self-abasement. The sex instinct will be eradicated. We shall abolish the orgasm. There will be no loyalty except loyalty to the party. But always there will be the intoxication of power. Always, at every moment, there will be the thrill of victory, the sensation of trampling on an enemy who is helpless. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. The moral to be drawn from this dangerous nightmare situation is a simple one. Don't let it happen. It depends on you. It's the year 1900, and radio has just been invented. Wireless radio transmission. It was the most fabulous invention of the 19th century. The public and the popular newspapers regarded it as nothing short of miraculous. And the leading scientists of the day in Europe and America, whose discoveries had made it possible, could not understand how it worked. In 1916, the first regular broadcasts on 9XM Wisconsin State Weather delivered in Morse code for public consumption as a weather update program. During the next two years, the broadcast radiation tower technology spread like wildfire across the nations. Then, in 1918, disaster struck. A condition was being noticed among the general public that seemed as though it could not be explained. Headaches. Nausea, fever, dizziness, weakness, dry cough, runny nose, and shortness of breath. The symptoms seem to be that of what we call today the flu or coronavirus. However, in 1918, doctors had little understanding of what it is they were looking at. Most of the history written about what was ultimately called the Spanish flu of 1918 was written in hindsight, such as the term influenza virus did not exist until 1931, coined by Ernest William Goodpasture. In 1912, Goodpasture graduated from the John Hopkins School of Medicine with an MD degree. There, under professors William H. Welch and George H. Whipple, he was subsequently appointed a Rockefeller Fellow in Pathology. After graduating John Hopkins, he joined the Harvard Medical School. In 1919, he undertook the pathological study of the then seemingly unknown pandemic engulfing the world with up to 50 million deaths recorded. In 1931, the Rockefeller Fellow funded Dr. Goodpasture announced that he had made the breakthrough in recreating and identifying the underlying cause of the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918 to 1920. This was the moment that concreted the belief by the American public as well as people around the world, that in fact, 
an influenza virus had killed 50 million people in the 1918 pandemic. John D. Rockefeller and his powerful friends like Frederick Taylor Gates, grandfather to now known Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft, co-founder of the John Hopkins University sponsored Event 201 that on October 18, 2019, held a live tabletop exercise in New York City simulating a world response to a severe pandemic outbreak of the same influenza strain that was claimed to have killed 50 million in 1918. The same people, the same organizations, and the same cover-up. Based on a team of investigative journalist research, what appears to have happened in 1918-1920 with the invention of radio is the human body's reaction to the never-before introduction of large-scale radio broadcasting and the overexposure of non-ionized radiation causing radiation poisoning. The symptoms proclaimed by the John Hopkins Organization for the Coronavirus, aka COVID-19, and the symptoms of long-term, low-dose overexposure to non-ionized radio transmission signals are the same and were found to be more likely the cause of the 1918 so-called Spanish flu pandemic. Did they know beforehand that the introduction of air radiation transmission aka radio transmission would cause sickness and death. Based on the fact of its cover-up for the past 100 years, it appears to be, yes, yes they knew, but they did it anyways. Why did they do it? Because of the power it gave to the military industrial complex and the power to promote propaganda to control the narrative of events like the Spanish flu and future events on the world stage, as well as great economic power is gained by the push and sale of products to the masses by companies owned by guess who? Them. Now 100 years later, and history seems to be repeating itself, a looming pandemic of the same claimed virus, just a novel or new version, a new type of radio transmission being rolled out worldwide. Claims of death in excess of 100,000 already at the time of this recording. Drills or exercises predicting the pandemic by the same organization, John Hopkins, and the Gates family involved in the cover-up of the last one, all financed once again by the same Rockefeller Foundation.
creator of sanctuary. Hail. 